Hey guys, welcome back to Andy's Dinosaur Reviews, and today we have something that's pretty darn cool to take a look at, as we have more Mattel Jurassic World figures, but as you can see, we have more mini figures, and this is Series 2 of the Dino Trackers minis, and you can see that it actually states Series 2 on the box, which is pretty cool. Uh, definitely makes it easier to locate, you know, what series you were looking at when you were in the store. Unfortunately, my stores don't have these, but luckily I have some pretty cool friends and viewers of the channel that like to help me out from time to time, which I greatly appreciate. So I want to give a huge shout out to William Hogan, as well as Plush Boy Q for helping me to acquire all of the new minis that... You know, I previously did not have the opportunity to grab. Uh, William Hogan actually acquired almost all of them, and then I had Plush Boy Q, Score Me and Indominus Rex, which would complete all of the new figures for this line, this wave of Dino Tracker minis. But you can see, as far as the packaging goes, you've got a really cool shot of an Indominus Rex here on the front of the box, which looks really, really nice. Definitely a big fan of the box art of this one. And then up here on the top, you can see all of the figures that are in this wave of minis, most of which we've had before, aside from a few. And uh, we will actually get through these, of course, and get to those uh, few here in just a moment. Now, you can see I only have three boxes present, but that's because I actually have the others over here in a little baggie, which these ones actually came from William Hogan's personal collection because he couldn't find them in store for me, so he actually had sold me the ones that he had in his own collection. So we've got those two over there, one of which is a really cool species we'll get to here in a moment. And then we've got that one as well, which clearly is the Spinosaurus. Now in this box, we're going to go ahead and see who we have. There's actually some tape we'll just cut off of here. If you happen to uh, acquire these and you need to use a razor knife or anything like that for your opening of the packages, be very careful with them. And you can see that we've got a very cool Tupendactylus in here as well as an Albertosaurus. So it's really neat to have new species entering the lineup for these minis because we don't have too many new species come along very often. Then in this one, and I actually forget which one of these was the box that was uh, sent to me by Plush Boy Q, so that actually confirms that this would be the box because this one is obviously the set with the Sarcosuchus and Iguanodon. Now this one, I just wasn't sure if the Iguanodon was a new paint variant or if this is one that we had before I couldn't remember so I had asked him to grab it just in case it was a new paint variant and then that would mean that that leaves us with one here in this box which obviously is going to be our Indominus Rex and yes sure enough that is exactly what it is we've got the Indominus in here and it does look very similar to the previously released Indominus from Mattel as I throw things here behind me but it is, uh, you know, more of the newer version, that kind of rubbery feel. So I guess it's a little bit different from the older one. But then again, we have this little slip in here showing off all of the figures in this wave of minis, most of which, again, we've had either previously in the Dominion line or in the first wave of Dino Tracker minis. But as far as the new figures go, we can again clearly see the variant of the Indominus. The Sarcosuchus is old. We've already had that one before. Again, I'm not positive on that Iguanodon, so I can't really say. I'm going to have to look here in a moment and see if that's one that we've already had. We also have the Tupendactylus, which is a really cool one to have entering the line. We don't get too many Pterosaurs. We've got the Albertosaurus, which is also a really cool one to enter the line. On top of that... A Pentaceratops, which is another species we previously did not have. I will say the only thing I kind of miss about the older minis is that sometimes, like with the Ceratopsians, you had a little articulation in the neck and stuff. You don't have that in these newer ones, which is a little bit of a downside. Of course, the Spinosaurus, which is almost the same figure as the previously released version. Now we're playing Dominoes. And the final one is this guy over here, which is actually a Cryptops. And that's very interesting because we have not had a figure of that species in the Mattel line. I don't have a figure of that species in my collection at all. I actually, when I had originally seen the images, because we didn't really see such super high quality images of these originally, I thought that this was going to be a Scorpiovenator, but as it Turns out it's actually not. It is a Cryptops, and that I believe was confirmed by Mattel. So these are the newest versions of the minis to come out for the Dino Trackers line. So let's go ahead and jump straight to a closer look at all of them right now. 
So after checking, I can definitely confirm we have had this Iguanodon before, which now means that this figure is not anything new. Uh, I believe this was in Wave 2 of the Jurassic World Dominion Mini. Still a beautiful Iguanodon, but not one that we need to take a look at, because again, we've already had this, we've already reviewed it, and if that is the case, then that means that our Sarcosuchus is the same as well. It's also something we've already reviewed, which I knew that already coming into it. I should have expected it to have been a uh, re-released figure as far as the Iguanodon goes, because it was packaged with the Sarcosuchus, and most times the newer ones are you know, uh, packaged with newer ones. So, you know, that obviously should have been a telltale sign that that is a repack. We also have the Spinosaurus, which is almost kind of a repack, but it's the first time I believe that we've had this in the newer style of minis where they're kind of, you know, softer, rubbery, kind of much more flexible versions of minis compared to the older ones and we do have an articulated jaw i kind of wish they'd update this one give us a newer sculpt a better looking sculpt because a lot of the minis look really good but this spinosaurus is probably one of the goofiest looking mattel minis that has ever come along but to show you that this is pretty much the same thing there is the older you know harder not so flexible version from Mattel. You can see they are the same size. They're pretty close when it comes to the coloration. I would say very, very close, except the gray of the newer version is slightly lighter, and uh, the coloration of the sail is a little bit different, as you can see that there's more of like a white uh, kind of design there in the center of the sail of the older one, much more reddish tones or orangish, like red-orange tones on the sale of the newer one. So they're pretty close overall, not something that's super different that if you have the original, you really need to run out and grab the newer one. But if you are into collecting every variant like I am, uh, then you might want to grab this one because it is slightly different, just ever so slightly, but almost the entirely same figure again that we had previously, except for the fact that again, now it's much more flexible than it was before. We also, though, do have a Pentaceratops, and this is the first time we've had the Pentaceratops in the uh, minifigure line. It's very similar in coloration to the previously released uh, larger version of the Pentaceratops that was in the main Mattel line. Obviously, a very, very similar coloration. Slightly different when it comes to the designs of those darker grays in the frill, though, and a little less paintwork as we had a lot more of the, uh, you know, spikes and stuff painted on the larger version, whereas this time we only basically have a brownish tone, the grays in the frill, and then only two of the three horns on the face have been given paint. Similar tone of color though, even for the horns, as to what we had seen prior. Doesn't look like we have eye paint that I can tell, which is something Mattel has really been doing a lot lately, is uh, releasing their minis without paintwork on their eyes, and I don't know why they've decided to do that. I feel like that's just not a great idea, because the minis losing their eye paint equals even less paintwork on the figures. But outside of that, the sculpt is phenomenal. You can see really highly detailed, really impressive, very vibrant detail throughout. You've got all the sculpting detail you would like to see, like the muscle definition, the fantastic skin texture and everything. And it does look really good. I would say probably one of the nicest minis that Mattel has actually released ever. If it had eye paint, it really would be. Uh, definitely one of the top minis, but sculpt-wise, it's unquestionably one of the best that I think we've seen, and I feel like they usually do a great job when it comes to their herbivores, or specifically, in general, any kind of quadruped, because a lot of the time, the theropods and stuff usually have larger feet. Any kind of bipedal animal normally has much larger feet, and obviously the feet aren't perfectly to scale with this figure, but I think they look a lot more proportionate than what you usually see on any kind of bipedal animal, which in turn, I think, makes the quadrupeds a lot more uh, appealing than the bipedal species they release, but definitely a gorgeous, gorgeous pentaceratops. And we also have the Albertosaurus, which at this point we've had quite a few Albertosaurus, so they've chosen to go with the greenish version, which again is reminiscent of a paint variant that we did have in the Mattel line. I think that this one could have benefited from an articulated jaw because the jaw just looks really weird like the lower jaw does. Looks kind of goofy on this one my camera would stay focused on it. It's still really cool to have the Albertosaurus in the minifigure line because again we haven't prior and just like with the 
Pentaceratops, it is absolutely loaded with incredible detail as well as extremely vibrant detail. The tail is super short though on this one, which is a bit of a bummer for this. But you do have the greenish tone for the body. You also have that kind of orangish tone there that runs down around the eye into the palate and then down the course of the body a little bit past the shoulder blade. And then you have a yellow for the lower jaw that leads down into the throat. And that's really about it as far as coloration goes for the Albertosaurus. It actually looks like maybe we have that same tone, that kind of like red-orange tone that we have going on there uh, for the eyes. So we do technically have eye paint for this one. Yeah, you can see it there as well. Uh, I would have preferred just a black would have probably looked all right. They don't really need to give it like a reddish tone like they've given it. But it's again really cool to have an Albertosaurus. And this one is nice to actually see that paintwork there of the eye. No paintwork for the teeth or anything, of course, but it's still pretty nice. We also have the Cryptops, and that one is really cool. And they actually did go all out a little, well, not really all out, but a little bit out with this one because they did give us some paintwork for the eye, I guess because this is a species of dinosaur we haven't had in the main line of Mattel. So it's pretty cool to have it in the minis. Hopefully, fingers crossed in a big way that we do get a mainline version of this because I would love to see that. But you can see that sculpt-wise, it looks really good. The nostrils are sculpted nicely. The skin texture looks great. We have kind of like a crest up here on the top of the head there running up and over the eye area. You can also see the mouth is sculpted in an open position. The teeth all look pretty decent as far as the sculpt goes. You've got a nicely sculpted tongue on the inside of the mouth. We have a fairly dark tone for the majority of the body, which allows this little area of lighter coloration leading up from the lower jaw to stand out quite nicely. And you can see that lighter tone overtakes the arms as you lead down. And if my camera would stay focused on it long enough, shows you that it actually leads into the stomach a little ways, which is pretty cool. We also have some ridges moving along the top of the dinosaur here. And you can see a lighter tone, kind of like a creamy tone running along the top of the dinosaur. And that actually leads out into the tail, kind of almost half way which is pretty cool to actually see that going on as well but you can also pick up on like some osteoderms and stuff leading down along the side of the dinosaur again the skin texture is really quite vibrant really pops on the sculpt you have a decent looking foot sculpt pretty much you know one of those oversized foot sculpts you usually see for mattel figures even more so oversized i would say in the minis you've got the dew claw there on the opposing leg you can see and then as you lead out into the tail there's a nice little curve there to the tail and uh, overall, again, it's a pretty cool version of a Cryptops. Definitely, again, a species that I don't have in my collection at all. And I'm actually fairly unfamiliar with. I don't know a whole lot about this species. But now having a figure of it from Mattel, I'm definitely going to have to look into it a little more. But it's certainly a pretty cool figure from Mattel and really random of them to choose this species. Like I had said, I thought for sure it was going to be a Scorpiovenator. But as it turns out, it is not. And I actually like it better because it isn't. And we also have the Tupendactylus, which is funny because until like just a few days ago, I actually had not acquired this figure yet. So I would have had the mini before I had actually acquired the mainline version, but... Uh, I do now finally have this, which means it'll be up for review very, very soon. But you can see, again, sculpt-wise, it looks great. You've got some really nice detail, especially up there in the crest of the pterosaur. It primarily is a brownish tone, just like you see on the main uh, line release. And you can see that there are, like, some orangish tones leading up there in the crest of the pterosaur as well. The face looks great. We've actually got some color there for the eye, which is a plus. You can see the nostrils. You can also see the nice beak there. Really nice, very highly detailed sculpt for the pterosaur. You've even got skin wrinkles and everything as you move down the course of the neck. And then as you lead up here, you can see that you've got some pretty decent looking detail here moving through the course of the wings. Not anything too impressive. Almost a little generic as far as that goes, but I think it looks okay. You can also see the spinal column moving down along the pterosaur. The legs look really nice as far as the sculpting aspect goes. And you can see we also have a hole here on the underside. Like a lot of the minis do, they usually have them on the feet so they can kind of be used in the play sets and stuff. But uh, the pterosaur has it on the underside of the chest. But definitely a really nice sculpt, really nice paint job, even though there's not a whole lot to it. It is cool to see, you know, eye paint and then that color up there in the crest looks really good. But definitely a cool figure to be entering the mini line. We don't get too many pterosaurs. And then we have the Indominus Rex, and you can see that this is a sculpt that looks pretty reminiscent of the older release 
of the Indominus Rex. We do have an articulated jaw on this one, so we have a little articulation. Definitely not my favorite Indominus Rex out there, but it looks okay. You can also see that we have a pretty strong kind of metallic look to it as we have a lighter tone, kind of like a very light white, almost like it looks like ice as far as the coloration of the primary body goes, and then a darker gray here leading along the upper side of the Indominus. And if you look back to the original version, again, the not so uh, flexible version. You can see it looks pretty close. The only real big difference I can see on this would be the fact that the uh, gray on the top is a bit darker on the newer one. I don't know if this had an articulated jaw. Yeah, it does have an articulated jaw. I feel like the head sculpts almost look a little bit different, but eh, maybe not. Maybe they look the same. It's hard to tell. We do also have eye paint on the newer one as well, but Outside of that, there's not a whole lot of difference between this and the previously released version. Again, just ever so slightly different as far as this variant goes. Mostly, it's the material used and the fact that, again, this one's way more flexible than the older one. But outside of that, I think the only real difference that I see is the fact that this gray on the top is a darker tone, a darker shade of gray compared to the older one. But still pretty cool to have the Indominus coming back again in the minifigure line. So as you can see, here are all of the minis that I've acquired from Wave 2 of the Dino Tracker line. There are a few more in the line, but like I said, they're all repeats, all repacks from previously released waves, and two of which you see here before you also are, which again is the Iguanodon and Sarcosuchus. But another pretty cool wave for sure, and I'm not going to do any measurements or size comparisons or anything like that. We are so many like lines into these minis since Dominion that at this point I think we've got a pretty good idea of how they size up but uh if you are unfamiliar with that maybe check out some of the older reviews that i've had up of the minifigures but this is again another pretty cool lineup another pretty cool wave of minis from mattel and i like the fact that we've introduced a few new species this time we've got what four new species total entering the lineup for this round of minis as we've got the Pentaceratops, and I would say probably one of the best of the figures of this wave would be that Pentaceratops. It looks great. There's nothing that's super goofy looking about it. Nothing that looks really severely off or anything as far as this one goes. Of course, it could always use a little bit more paint like painted eyes, but it still looks pretty darn good as a whole. The sculpt is really nice, and the paintwork, again, is fairly reminiscent to the older release. We also have the Tupendactylus, which is another really cool one. Again, it's always great to have a new species of pterosaur in the Mattel line even if it's the minis but we also do have this in the danger packs as well pretty nice looking paintwork for it for what it is nothing overly flashy but decent for a minifigure and definitely a really gorgeous sculpt I would say honestly as far as the best of this lineup goes the two top contenders would be the Tupendactylus and the Pentaceratops I really don't know that I could choose one of those over the other the Albertosaurus is also really cool, but I think the lower jaw makes it look a little bit strange, a little bit goofy. Probably should have had an articulated jaw to make that one look a little bit better, but it is still awesome to have an Albertosaurus in the minifigure line, and it's got a pretty cool paint scheme, one that we have seen in the main line of uh, Jurassic World figures before, so it's nice to have one that matches up to that larger version. On top of that, we have a Cryptops, which is crazy cool. Again, totally out of left field would be that one when it comes to a species we've never even seen in the main line of Mattel. We usually don't get minis that aren't in the Mattel main line, so it's pretty cool to see that here, and hopefully that's a sign that we will get one in the main line. Very, very obscure species chosen by Mattel for this release, and uh, again, the sculpt looks absolutely phenomenal. The paintwork is okay. You know, it's not great. It's not terrible. Probably one of the uh, better paint jobs of all of these minis, though, for this round, as it has a few different tones of color, and a lot of the others only really have like two tones of color, which makes this one pretty cool. You also have the Spinosaurus, which again is just ever so slightly different from the older one as far as the coloration goes, and the uh, material used again is a lot more flexible on the newer one. Definitely a figure I would like to see get re-sculpted, giving us a newer one that looks a little bit better. And then on top of that we have the Indominus, which I love the Indominus Rex as well, and it's another one of those instances where I'd like to see a newly sculpted version of the Indominus, because even though I think this one looks okay, it yet again is a sculpt we've had in the past, it's almost the exact same figure as the previous one similar to the spino where we have again the same 
figure, just different material where it's more flexible and a slightly different paint application. But as a whole, it's another really cool round of minis and definitely some fun stuff to search out to add to your collection. So if you are interested, make sure you check your local Walmart because that's where all of these were acquired again by William Hogan and Plush Boy Q. Again, one last huge thank you goes out to them and good luck to you guys when it comes to finding these. Hopefully you snag them sooner rather than later. And make sure you also like, comment, and subscribe and I will see you in the next review. Thanks for watching.